so disease and death, uh, there's, you know, when it comes to smoking, there's one that's not talked about a lot. I mean, in none of our coverage is autoimmune diseases linked to smoking. Mm. So like say rheumatoid arthritis, I just got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, RA, mm. Uh, in May, it's ravaging. I mean, it's out of control. So, you know, basically my body is trying to kill me by trying to save me. It, it's, yeah. uh, it's thinking it's trying to save me. And, and with that, so it's sorry. killing me. It runs in my family, yeah. Yeah, and for me, it doesn't at all in mm -hmm. our family. So, you know, what are the factors? And so researching the factors, smoking is the number one. It's like 70 or mm -hmm. 80% of people who have RA smoked. It's and then not only that, but if you have RA, and it's onsetted and and it's doing ravaging your body and if you still smoke it absolutely uh, makes most of the drugs ineffectual so the single mm. best thing you can do to help you improve your lot um, is to quit smoking and you know i smoked for 25 years and most of that two packs a day and then i quit mm. in 2015 and i'll have to tell you this will be a shock for some of my viewers but like around in 2017 2018 in just sheer animosity and just fed up, just whatever it was, I, you know, I dual used, yeah, two, three smokes a day, something like that, a couple, mm -hmm. a pack a week or something like that for a short time, it might've been a year or two. Um, and then it was like, okay, I finally shook it off. But, you know, all of a sudden the RA hits and I'm going, boy, mm -hmm. did that little chunk of smoking there, uh, mm -hmm. you know, push me over the edge? Was it the 25 years of smoking? All of the, you know, really weighs on you and because, It'd be one thing if it was cancer, and I know that it would come from smoking, but the RA is, is different and it's not talked about. And mm -hmm. I guess my, my point with this is that, you know, for vapors, there's no room for you to have a discussion in the community of other vapors about things that are going wrong with your body as you're vaping, mm -hmm. because the atmosphere is so uh, antagonistic from science, from researchers, from government, from regulators, from all of these public health activists, activists that you can't even talk about it. So how much <laughs> is being lost in, mm. in terms of knowledge because it is just so blanketed by this vaping is gonna kill you and here, keep smoking. That. Oh, interesting. So if I'm hearing this right, so as you're navigating your own health, um, whether or not it's related to vaping, it's almost like you don't wanna talk about it for fear that you could be framing vaping in a bad light. Absolutely. Or, yeah, um, this is really interesting as I work on my aging and smoking work. Um, uh, yeah, I think that <laughs> um, it's it's actually a big gap. I haven't seen this discussed at all by scientists and I do work in the chronic pain field. Um, and so I learned a little bit more about rheumatoid arthritis that way. And my dad, it's funny you say this, he had it and he was still smoking and it was quite bad, um, towards the end of his life and very painful. And I do wonder if he had known more, if there'd been better messaging and even as a scientist understanding the role of inflammation and how RA works and cigarettes, it never occurred to me to say something to him. And I tried to not be preachy. I mean, I was his daughter and I understood, but like, maybe would you try maybe vaping and not smoking and see if the symptoms, I, I think you're on to something that is, um, is important. I hope researchers are listening to this and can maybe integrate that more into their research. Um, it's just the reality that we're all going to develop comorbidities and whether or not they're improved by lifestyle changes like switching to vaping or switching to another nicotine product, snus or whatever. Um, that's essential information because it's not just mortality, it's your quality of life, which is so essential with a, a disease like that. And you have my compassion with that because, you know, um, autoimmune diseases are sort of unpredictable, but we know that cigarettes cause inflammation. And we, I don't know the research closely with vaping, but my understanding is it's the same as carcinogen delivery. It's magnitudes less in terms of inflammation on the body. Yeah. Well, and the rheumatologists that I'm working with uh, for my health, um, they don't know much about vaping, right? But there's the assumption, mm -hmm. of course, that it is much better than if you're smoking and get off smoking right away uh, is the big message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I wish that vape, there was an environment in which people who do vape and are advocates and, and, and work in this space could be talking about it. But absolutely, without mm -hmm. a doubt in my mind, there is no oxygen for discussions about vaping effects that could be deleterious to health by people who vape because there's mm. just no way. 
Yeah, I think that's important, especially if if I'm preaching that we need to educate people as they age and if they want to age into using nicotine, which is their right, that there's safer ways to use it, but they're going to inevitably develop comorbidities because that's what we do when we age and we need to be able to talk about them. But if it's shameful, right? Because you're already like, ah, I know I smoked. So now the the curse of the disease. Yeah. That's I wish I had more knowledge of it on an intellectual level, but yeah, it's something I've never talked about. Well, that's okay. Well, we're talking about it now and we're going to be talking mm. about it in the future for sure, because uh, this RA thing, regardless if I have it or not, here's a big, huge gaping area in which there's no discussion and it, mm-hmm. quitting smoking is the single best thing you can do to improve your quality of life. 